So we're going to start by looking at domain and range. And these are two terms that come up over and over and over again. They're really quite simple to understand by themselves, but being able to apply that on your own to certain functions and predict the range in the domain is a little bit trickier. So quite simply, the domain is a set of x values you can possibly have, and the range is a set of y values you can possibly have. So if I give you a linear function, let's just say y equals x, that's going to look like this, correct? What are the total set of x values I can get from that function? What can x equal? Hmm? Infinite, yeah, it can equal anything, can't it? Is there any reason why x can't equal negative 1,443,000? And a reason why x can't equal 4,988? Well, the book is no, small. Yeah, but I can just make my graph figure. Keep going for everyone. Cool. What about the y values? Anything? Do we agree? It can be anything. So the range in the domain for this would both be negative infinity to infinity, or all set of real numbers. What if I was to change my function and it's no longer a linear function? What's another type of function we've looked at before? Starts with Q, ends in quadratic. Geez, you're good, Jerry. Who was your teacher last year? He must be good. Okay, so these bad boys look like this, big smiley face, correct? Domain line, what do you reckon? What are the x values that can equal? Is there any limit to the x values you can have? They can be any of the cut. What about our y values? What do you think our range is there? Okay, is there a limit to what our range is? So y can be negative 15 on that function? No, I couldn't. What's the smallest value y can be? Zero. So our range goes from zero to infinity, correct? So that's where we use range and domain. It's in predicting or identifying what are the possible set of values we can come across. Now if you look at question two there, there's two parts to that. The first part is determine the function in general form. We're going to talk about general form and include the range in the domain. I think it is she. You didn't go to she, that's all right? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. So, let's look at question 2a before we go any further. Now question 2a looks something like, I'll get rid of that, we'll talk about converting to general form in a second. Question 2a looks something like this, so I point it four, Sorry, not negative four. Four, negative one, and it's got a point at two, one. And it's connected like that. What does that mean? those two points correct? Anything beyond that point? So there's a definitive range and domain here. What's the largest value of y we can get? Jerry? Four. Four. So I'm going to write range over here. This is my range. So my range would go from, I'll go to four. What are those signs mean, by the way? Um, yeah, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, depending on. So what must y be greater than? If I draw my graph. What's the smallest value y can possibly equal? What do you reckon, Jordan? One. So I know that on this question 2a, my range is one to four. Now it's including because the circles are coloured in. If you remember last year, we did open circles and closed circles, if it's closed, it's included. If it was a closed circle, like an open circle like this, I would simply get rid of the line under there because it's not included. Now, don't mind, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to get that done by yourself. Domain for that function, see if you can get that done on oh, for question 2a there.
20 seconds to go. Lockie, what's the smallest value that X can equal? Negative 1. Negative 1, very good. And the largest value, Tom? 2. 2. That's the range that I'm running. That's half the question done.